Hi, welcome back to another edition of Lippers Fund Flows Insight. My name is Tom Rosine. Thanks for joining me today. I'll be reporting flows for the weekend at Wednesday. June 27th, 2015. Uh, investors actually dragged a little bit of money out of the market. Uh, it's the fourth week in five that we've seen outflows. Only have $1.1 billion left the market. It was really one of those confusing weeks where people were sitting on the sidelines not knowing what to do. At one point, uh, they actually uh, had a little bit of elation going on uh, even after the economic news came out a week, but they heard that the uh, Fed released its minutes and basically saying the likelihood of a June cut would not be in the cards. Literally two days later, we learned about the uh, CPI, uh, jumping G CPI, and then along with uh, good uh, employment numbers coming out, uh, put a pal over the market again. And people are all worried about uh, interest rates increases uh, occurring again. And then, of course, on the last day of the, the week, uh, we had another rally in techs. Uh, which sent uh, the NASDAQ to record highs. It's not hard to hit record highs anymore. It's just that we're not having big corrections. So every little incremental up seems to be a record high uh, around this time period. Uh, let's see how all this uh, news actually panned out to the flows and what happened. Like I said, it was a very lackluster week. And if we take a look at our macro group, equity funds uh, saw about a, a $400 million outflow. Really nothing to write, you know, write about. That almost could be a rounding error. Taxable bond funds saw about the same thing. And inflows, $300 million in inflows. And then we had muni bond funds that lost about uh, $200 million. And then we get to money market funds and they only lost about $700 million. So really it was one of those ho-hum weeks that nothing happens. Like everybody was sitting on the sideline kind of saying, what is going on and what are we going to do? Let's take a look, a closer look at the uh, groups uh, up close. So we'll take a look at equity group uh, first. We saw that they had a return of negative 0.31%. It's the first week of three they actually were negative. But if we take a look, we had $415 million in outflow. And this is the fifth consecutive week that they've seen outflows. How it panned out is domestic equity funds actually saw about $1.7 billion in outflows. The 17th consecutive week they've seen outflows, but non-domestic equity funds took away all that away and it brought everything back. $1.3 million in inflows. It's the eighth consecutive week that they've seen in inflows. And if we take a, a closer look at that group, large cap and small cap actually saw the outflows, about $1.4 billion for large cap and just about $300 million for the small cap. But interesting enough, even though there's some of the turmoil going on, international equity funds took in $1.1 uh, uh, billion. And uh, really, if we take a look at the subgroups in their emerging markets, uh, Pacific Japan, Pacific region funds, and Japanese funds, all were on the plus side. Kind of amazing. Let's take a look at the equity ETF universe, see what happened there. A little bit of change there. Uh, second a week in three that we've actually seen uh, inflows, only about $600 million. Uh, not that much to write about, but again, iShares, MSCI, IFA, uh, saw about $520 million in inflows, and the iShares Russell 1000 saw about $470 million. Now, this was reported uh, uh, incorrectly by me on the write up, so hopefully people are able to take a look at this. Uh, the numbers, have, uh, I'm not sure what I pulled, but I pulled the wrong numbers originally in the write up. Um, and so that's, uh, that got through on the kind of blast that we send out, but uh, doing the correction here. What we would expect, though, with the market turning its uh, shoulder on the uh, U.S. market, basically Spider uh, SPY uh, basically saw uh, um, about a two billion dollar outflow, and then we saw the Russell uh, 2K uh, 2000 actually have a 1.9 billion dollar outflow. That's kind of expected when we have this type of market. So again. Big money coming into internationals, big money leaving uh, the domestic market. It's just been a trend we've been seeing in quite some time. Let's turn our attention to the fixed income side. The fixed income side for the third consecutive week, uh, we saw that uh, they had inflows, this time to the tune of only $300 million. Third consecutive week, again, that we've seen the inflows, but it's the third consecutive week that we have obviously, obviously uh, um, seen plus side returns as well. So that's something that hasn't been reoccurring. Eh? We've been kind of have off and on. This one was only to the tune of 0.05% uh, returns, almost nothing. Where the money is going, those flexible portfolio funds saw about $300 million in net new money coming in their 18th consecutive week. They've seen money come in, while uh, corporate investment grade debt funds actually saw outflows only about $116 million. But the reason I wanted to highlight that is because we also saw treasuries lose money. Uh, this is uh, they saw about $310 million in out outflows, again, also for the first week in three. So investors were really kind of uh, leaving that safe haven area. Uh, but midweek, as I was telling you during the first panic, we actually saw people jumping in a safe haven place. So it was really kind of a head scratcher overall. Let's take a look at the ETF side of the fixed income market and uh, see what happened there. They lost about $2.3 billion first week in three. They've seen outflows. And this is actually a pretty big outflow for uh, the ETF side of fixed income funds. At the top of the universe, it was uh, bringing in money as iShare Core US uh, Aggregate Bond Fund uh, ETF, taking it up about $197 million. iShares International uh, Credit Bond Fund ETF, so about $55 million in that new money 
take them in. Now here's where the story is. iShares Treasuries uh, bond ETF saw $1.6 billion in outflow, and that accounted for just about the majority of all the outflows that occurred in the fixed income universe, and that's on the taxable side. Let's take a look now at the muni market side. Uh, as far as that goes, muni, uh, municipal bond funds saw about $278 million in outflows, fourth consecutive week. They've seen outflows. Pretty common. We see treasuries getting beat up. We see munis get beat up, uh, you know, when the markets are kind of normalizing. Uh, it's the first week in eight uh, that uh, they've actually had positive returns, though. So here we had outflows, but positive returns. 0.24% was the positive return. And if we take a look at a subset of it, national munis lost about $185 million. This, by the way, is their fourth consecutive week that they've seen outflows. Now let's turn our attention to the last segment, and that's money market funds. Really kind of a ho-hum week. Second week in three that we've seen outflows, $0.7 billion uh, as far as outflows. How this broke out, uh, taxable money market funds saw about $129 million in outflow. And how this really related was we saw that uh, institutional money markets actually saw about a, a $4 billion in outflow, but then we saw the taxable, uh, uh, the taxable uh, retail side I had to have about $3.9 million in inflow, so we only had $129 uh, million net. Tax exempt money market funds, however, saw about $603 million in outflow, being the larger of the outflows of the group. That's kind of unusual, but it's just because we had this disparity uh, in inflows and outflows uh, in the retail and institutional side of the taxable money market side. Well, that really brings it to an end for us on this conversation. Uh, we're obviously going to be concerned about what we heard today. We saw a downgrade in the revision to uh, Q1 uh, real GDP. Um, it, it was really much lower of a, of a, of a, of a revision, um, negative revision than an analysts had anticipated, but it was still a negative revision. I think that's going to maybe place a pal over the market as people take a look at uh, GDP growth, uh, the rest of the earnings season, which is just about over, and then, of course, the news, economic news that will be coming out. Well, if we didn't do a deep enough dive for you on this report, uh, you can always go to our site at uh, www.lipperusfundflows.com, uh, or you can join us next week where one of the analysts will talk to you about fund flows. Until then, my name is Tom Rosine, wishing you the best in your wealth planning and creation.